Truckers XTV on air. We are now live in three, two, one. Welcome back to another episode of the Great Ace Attorneys. In the previous episode, we went into trial, and the trial was not in our favor. Today's episode right now, we're going to learn a new method of this gameplay, and that's the summation examination. So we're going to start our ride and keep on going, and hopefully we survive this court case. If you're high today's episode, make sure that like button is close to the channel. The fence wishes to assert its right to summation examination, my lord. Objection. London is the capital city of the most powerful nation on earth. We have a duty to work to the world to exemplify the very highest standards of judicial procedure. Summation examination are an embarrassment that should have remained buried. Objection. But if it's our right, it's our right. I believe it could be vital in this trial. The defense petition is perfectly valid. The court will proceed with the summation examination. This is madness. Foreman, are you and the remainder of the jury ready? Huh? Well, uh, I'm not. Uh, there was no mention in this in the letter I received. You say so? All members of the jury will be asked to explain on what grounds they have reached their decision. Oh, what grounds? Oh, this might be in our favor after all. You must all justify your decision and explain why you believe the defendant to be guilty. Oh, my lord, you're rather putting us on the spot. This is most irregular. No mention was made of this before. I don't really hold with, with all this justifying lark. You're supposed to be down there, not up there. That seems to have thrown the jurors off. It seems none of them have experienced this before. All right then, the summation examination. A defense procedure no practicing lawyer has attempted for years, is it? Well, just maybe, it might be the opportunity we've been looking for. To turn this trial around. So be it then, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the court hereby calls upon you to state the grounds on which you find the defendant, Magnus McGilda, guilty of his most serious crime. So now we press on those guys, right? Judicial findings. I think that's why I read. Jurors' contentions. There was no one else inside the carriage at the time, so it had to be him. I trust the driver. He has an excellent memory, it seems. Four passengers with fares totaling 20 pence. He stuck the chap next to him just like this. Brazen, I must say. Absolutely brazen. You're holding the knife and right next to your freaking... Oh, ready then. I have simply typed and collated the statements made thus far and drawn the logical conclusion. You can trust the guild. Fair fares is our motto. We haven't raised prices above four pence for years. That scoundrel stabbing that poor man on the floor. It beggars belief. I think we can press her. I'm starting to wish I hadn't pushed for this now. Some of the jurors don't seem to have wonderfully informed arguments though, do they? Well, let's see what we can do now. We need to get these six people to change their minds. I'll have to throw everything I can at them and use some very persuasive, persuasive language. Just a minute, Mr. Naruhodo. According to my book, that's not quite how it works. Oh? I thought I was going to have to thaw the, their icy minds with some heartwarming th rhetoric about the defendant. Unfortunately, no. Once the jurors have decided the defendant is guilty, they are unlikely to heed anything the defense says. But, but then, they've reached their conclusions by their own reasoning, you see. Your pleas will sound like excuses. In fact, it could recall on you. The more you try to persuade them, the more entrenched they may become. Then what on earth am I supposed to do? Oh dear, I'm just citing what I've read about British law, Mr. Naruhodo. Right, I'm sorry. Do you have any idea how to make this work then? Well, from what I can understand, the key to pr the procedure is using the juror's own words to make your own make your arguments. What do you mean? Well, the six members of the jury are randomly selected members of the public. They may appear to present a united front, but the truth is, they are complete strangers who just happen to find themselves here in the courtroom together. And that's the way to break them down, you mean? Yes, exactly. 
We must listen very carefully to what each member of the jury says and see if we can identify any contradictory statements. If we can, we can then contrast the statements and pit the corresponding jurors against each other. I see, so it's contradictions in what two or more jurors say that we're looking for. In a way, then, this is similar to a regular cross-examination. Oh, yes, I suppose you're right. Find contradictions in their statements and pit the jurors against one another to break them down. Alright, I might be able to pull this off. No, that's not right. I have to pull this off. Can we start proceeding, counsel? I would ask you to take the stand for this. I'm expecting a clear, concise rebuttal. rebuttal. Yes, my lord. Jury examination. The defense rebuttal. The, there... Oh, there was no one else inside the carriage at the time, so it has to be him. I trust the driver. He has excellent memory. It seems four passengers with fares 20 pence. He stuck the chap next to him just like this. Brazen, I must say. Absolutely brazen. I have simply typed and collated all the statements made thus far and drawn to the conclusion. Nope. No! No, stupid! No! Back! Back it up! Back it up! That's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. It's just a press, though. That's right, as the guild master, I decided to set a policy for all drivers across the city. One fare, no matter which bus you take or how far you're going. We have to compete with the rise of the motor car, you see. Us coachmen have to make a stand together. Motor cars, you say? Yes, and this murder on the one bus is extremely damaging to our cause. It's beyond the pale. It will lead to decline the passengers, you mark my words, and it's all Rascal's fault. He has to pay. Is it a crime, or is buses... He's more worried about. Anyway, every member of the guild is reliable and trustworthy. So if the driver says he saw him do it, the fellow in the dock is guilty as is a sin. Back it up! Back it up! Let's hear what she has to say. Um... What have you been doing all this time? What have you been doing all this time? There. I should have thought it was obvious. I'm recording everything that takes place as part of these proceedings. Aren't you be down there then? And what have you learned from that? For example, at this moment in time, the judge has used his gavel 11 times in total. The prosecution has snorted the rib blah 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 at, at your remarks 7 times in total. And I might add each time you have goth like a simpleton. Thank you! And what's the point exactly? So anyway, madam, are you able to explain why you think the defendant is guilty? You have yet to provide an exact example. That is a conclusion I have drawn as a result of the copious notes I have typed. Clearly, but I'm asking you to explain why you've drawn that conclusion. Please don't extract me. It makes me extremely hard to concentrate on my note keeping. This is going nowhere. I thought we had something with her. I trust the driver, he has an excellent memory. It seems four passengers first. But does his ability to recall his takings that night really tell us how trusted the man is? I manage all of his lordship's cash affairs. I saw him very particular when it comes to accounts. I see. That's a saying in your country. My point is, a man who finds his figures is a man you can trust. Those of us in service would swear that to that, sir. Does that bench really need any more polishing? So if the good driver says that he saw Mr. McGilded in the act, I don't doubt him. The only task left to do today is disposing the rubbish. Ah, uh, now wait a minute. One of the other jurors mentioned something about money, I think. Now we would be a very good time to listen carefully to the jurors' statements again. If you notice any inconsistencies when what two different jurors are saying, I should expose by pitting them against each other. Yes, let's see if I can do just that. Okay, I think my dumb play actually did it. Cause he was saying something about this too. He said, she said 20 pence. What's this? That's how much it costs to take the omnibus? Four bus? Four pence? He said four pence, but she said 20, right? Back it up, back it up, back it up, back it up. Barrett tolling 20 pence. 
rises above four pants. Pit! 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 Those two statements clearly contradict each other. They do? Explain yourself, Council. Me? Oh dear, what have I said? I swear on Silver Blaze's main name, I have not the first idea what you're talking about. According to the group testimony we heard so far, there were four passengers on the omnibus on the night in question, and according to the coachman, Mr. Beppo, he took 20 pence in fares. Quite right, I have the precise details typed neatly here in front of me. And juror number five also told us the following. The fare for the omnibus is always four pence. That is a fare, a convenient single price, just the way London carriages should be operated. But that doesn't add up at all. That will be 16, there should be one more. In fact, it leaves a glaring discrepancy in the fact. Why man, why? Four passengers paying four pence each. If you do the multiplication, ah, it would be 16 pence. Exactly, as I said, it doesn't add up. The figures are different. By four pence, in fact, or precisely one person's fare. One person's fare. Yes, in other words, on the omnibus that night, it's distinctly possible there was another passenger we heard nothing about. Good gracious! This, this can't be right! The coachman of the guild are good, honest men. One and all, trustworthiness is our watchword. The figures your coachman claims most certainly do not add up. Your watchword, good sir, is fallacy. I beg your pardon? Mr. Guildmaster, I think you ought to consider that if a trial were to end now, the news will surely spread all over London. The news that one of your coachmen tried to hide the fact that he let nefarious characters ride his omnibus. Alright then, how do I make it so miserable trial doesn't end, hmm? Maya? Well, according to my book here, you simply launch a ball of fire onto the innocent side of the set of scales. Now hold your horses there, coachman. We are all in agreement. Why do you have to go and... Wait till I get my hands on you, Bippo! Yeah! Let's go! Let's keep this going. Oh, this is very infuriating. Begging your pardon, sir. I'm going to do the same. Yeah! Let's go! Let's keep this going. For the love of Mike, not you as well. A penny can be the difference between a smile and a tear after all. I certainly can't put my trust in someone who doesn't follow my exact standards in financial matters. Oh, really? I, for one, think it's only proper that we hear from the witnesses again. Oh, well done, Mr. Naruhodo. You did it. If we can manage to change two more jurors' minds, we can force the trial to continue. Two more. Actually, there is something else that bothers me about a couple of their assertions. Then what you must strike next. So I need to pit two more jurors against each other and show them another contradiction in their assertions. Exactly. You can do it. Well, the scales of justice have shifted, but they still weigh heavy on the side of guilt. Council, you have the floor again. Continue with your summation examination. Okay, there was no one else inside the carriage at the time, so it has to be him. He stuck the chap next to him like a prison. The scoundrel stabbing the poor man on the floor, a beggar. On the floor? Careful, you could hurt something with that right next to you. Tisk, you're a fine one to talk. What of the sword hanging with your waist? Hmm? No, no, that's just my battered soul. Well, anyway, I despise anyone with too much money. They're all the same, all stabbing with some brick maker or other behind the scenes. You mark my words. That seems very unlikely, doesn't it? Are you madmen? 
We know that the small shorty is a rod and Shylock. Well, yes. It does seem to be a case, but... Oh, Mr. Naruto, please, be careful what you say. If he's been trying to squeeze money out of us less fortunate, then as far as I'm concerned... He's guilty of sin! That man can hang! Come to think of it... Didn't one of the other jurors have something to say about the defendant's underhanded activities? If you I thought of Mr. Naruhodo, then don't... I don't know! Hit the two jurors whose statements seem to be contradictory against each other. Yes, 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 we were there before. So what I'm thinking is this guy... And her... I really think you should stop waving that needle around. You heard what the good coachman said before, didn't you? That hideous man stabbed a poor fellow just like this! Yes, that is what he said, you're right. McGilla Park is such a lovely little place too. I've always enjoyed resting my legs there while I get on my, with my knitting. And I had thought that anyone who donates such a delightful place must be a fine fellow indeed. I suppose I was wrong. Whoever would have thought he was a miserable, murdering money lender with no scrub of remorse? Oh, help! She's as sure as can be that he's guilty now. She was no help. Hmm, so we just need to find two jurors with contradictory statements and pit them against each other. Which one is much easier than said and done? How did you know? Well, I took liberty of doing some research in case you happen to find yourself in such a situation. Shall I read you what I found? It's a little long, I'm afraid. Not right now. If I have to rely on advice right from the start, how will I get on later? No. No, I need to work this out for myself now. Is that perhaps what you were just thinking? How did you know? Well, that sort of attitude is most admirable, Mr. Naruhodo. I know what I have to do! Let's listen to those assertions one more time! Okay, I know I, I can pit him against someone. There was no one else inside the character type, so it has to be him. I'm about to press the thing. Let me see the history. How far back can we look into this? Uh, he stuck the trap next to him just like a brazen, I must say. Careful, you blah blah, you're a fine one to talk with a star, blah blah. Well, anyways, I despise anyone with too much money. They're all the same, all stabbing some brick maker behind the scenes. That seems very unlucky, doesn't it? Are you madman? We know the small shorty is running Shylock. Well, yes, that does seem the case, but be careful with you, blah blah. If he's been trying to squeeze money out of us less fortunate, then as far as I'm concerned, he's guilty as a sim. Didn't one of the other just have something to say about the defendant's underhand activities? Uh, we'll pit him and her as. Objection. Let's see it. Those two terms are completely contradictory. What? Exploring council, post chase. Oh, dearie me, I was only knitting my jumper for my ha other half. What is all this claptrap? What does contradicting even mean, I ask you? We've heard from more than one witness that they allegedly saw the actual moment when the offender stabbed the victim. Now, out of curiosity, juror number three. What? Well, can't you see I'm busy here? Did I make the right call? How would you say the defendant stabbed the victim? What sort of motion was it? Ah, want to test? Want to test me? Do you? Just not the person next to you. It was like this: stuck the fellow next to him without even getting up, just like the prim banker said. Yes, that was Mr. Fairplay's testimony. Quite true. Now, then, juror number six. Oh, is that me, is it? What can I do for you, young man? How would you say the defendant stabbed the victim, madam? Oh, well, dear, as far as I understand it... It was like this. He stabbed the poor man after he collapsed on the floor. The coachman said so. Now, don't move. Take a look at those two jurors. He stuck the fellow next to him without even getting up. And he stabbed the poor man after he collapsed on the floor. Well, I never. There. 
They're stabbing in totally different directions. What? Bless my stitches. What a muddle. What this tells us is that there's a strong possibility one of the witnesses isn't telling the truth. Oh. But why? Why the dickens would they lie? I don't know that yet, but what I do know is that the trial ends at this point, we may never find out. We may never know the real truth. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, can you really let that happen in all good conscience? Lies, you say? Oh, dearie me. Yeah! I cannot buy people telling lies. Yeah! The scales. I don't believe it. Hold it. Wait. Now here it is, my fellow jurors. I warn you, you cannot listen to this man. Look at him in the black suit. He's, he's clearly some devious eastern sor sorcerer using magic on us all. If I could use magic, do you really think I'd be putting myself through all this? Answer me this, Dark Jinx. Huh? Me? What exactly is the problem? One of the two witnesses having slightly different recollections of events. One of it? Let's say the Sherlock did stop the victim as he was sat next to him on the omnibus. And this young dandy saw him do it. And now let's say the victim collapsed on the floor. And then the Sherlock stabbed him again. The Ole saw him do it. Well, what's to say it didn't happen like that, hmm? Who are you calling a dandy, sir? Why should I take his knife to you? Who are you calling old? Why I should take this needle to you? Uh, they're ready to kill each other now. But could the foreman of the jury be right? Did the two witnesses see two different moments of the same crime? It's possible. It's true. I need to look at their witness statements again just to confirm because I don't remember anything from the witness statement. There's an outside chance of almost anything you care to mention. Exactly the point I've been trying to make. Before you go any further, Mr. Narahodo. Oh, what is it, Mr. Sato? I think you should have a look through the court record. Ah, you see? This evidence makes it quite clear. There isn't even an outside chance of what the juror is saying. How did I miss that? My bad. Unfortunately, Mr. Foreman. Huh? What is it, Dark Jinx? Come out with it. What you're suggesting is impossible. It's out of the question. What? What are you talking about, man? How can you possibly say that? You, you can do realize that I'm only doing my job. As foreman of the jury, I have responsibility to steer everyone in the right direction. So where is your evidence, man? What? That, that's what we want to see. I say the two witnesses are two different moments of the crime. If you say that out of question, show me the proof. It looks like the only way I'm going to convince him is to present him with something he can't dismiss. Some inferior hard evidence. As you wish. What? I'll give you the proof. It's out of the question that the two witnesses saw two different moments of the same crime as proven by... Okay, you got two choices. A or B. I'm gonna go with A. I'm going with A right here. If not, B. Take that! This clear piece of evidence. Well, Mr. Foreman? Okay, then it's gotta be the Omnibus. It's the Omnibus, then. It's the Omnibus. It's the Omnibus right there. That's what it is. Because I did saw the Omnibus, and it doesn't show any blood markings. Get to the point! Take that! Oh, come on! It's not that? What? Hold up. Get in there. Get in there! My reasoning is that there's blood right there. 
If it was on the floor, there would be blood there. That was my reasoning. Right there, in that exact moment. That was my reasoning back there. Stop once in the abdominal. Oh, let's join it up. Whatever. Let's get into this. Last hope. This is the victim's autopsy report. According to what's written here, the Mason blah 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 blah. Only once. Only once. It's already shown right here. Nothing else. It could be also shown in here. No blood in the ground. My two logical reasons. But let's go with the autopsy report. Let's go. Eh? Only once? It's quite simple. The victim was stabbed precisely one time. Which means these witnesses can't possibly have seen it happen two different times. Where's your knife? Alright, I can see the feet. Yeah! Let's go! Wait. That... That means... Four jurors are now leading to not guilty. We've done it, Mr. Narahodo. We've won! For the first part, that is. <laughs> what are you playing at, you dandy fool? Shut your trap, sir! No one deceives me! Well, we had a consensus. I said, shut your trap! I know a lie when I see one. And if the trap ever dares to cross the threshold of my shop, I'll take that razor sharp blade and shave every last hair of his head. Please tell me he's barber. He's a barber? Well, an acquired remarkable turn of events. The defense summation examination has flipped the balance of the scales of justice. The jurors now stand at two for guilty and four for not guilty. Accordingly, there is no longer a large enough majority among the jury for me to adjudicate whatever. And the trial must continue. I hereby ask the defense, prosecution, and witnesses to return to their places. And I call upon you to continue to pursue the truth. Alrighty then. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we'll end the episode right here. Like, comment, subscribe, Shrokas XCB, and I'm signing out.